your body knows exactly what it needs to be healthy. But again, our monkey mind, it just gets in the way. The chattering gets in the way. So how do we access intuitive eating? Well, there are a couple of exercises, but it takes a lot of time and it takes some practice. And you keep having to go back and back and back and practice and practice and practice. But here's how you do it. So you can layer out a tablespoon of sugar, maybe a slice of bread. If you happen to have candy in the house, maybe some candy. Then you can layer out an apple, maybe some nuts. Maybe something else that's really healthy, maybe another fruit, maybe some berries. Just lay them out on the counter for a bit. And then you close your eyes, and again, you take 10 breaths, in and out, and in and out. And if you have an Apple Watch, you can use the little Breathe app and do the whole breath thing again. You know, the whole idea around this is to take a breath and center yourself. Find the center of who you are, your balance, the wisdom of who you are. And then you pick up the sugar and you ask your body if this is good for you. Don't overanalyze this, folks. And the answer will be instant. Of course, going ahead, you know that the sugar isn't good for you. But I want you to feel it in the body. And just ask her or him, is this good for me? Put the sugar down. Next, pick up the apple. And again, ask her or him, ask your body, is this good for you? Is this good for me? And again, you'll get the answer. It's instant. It's immediate. And I want you to be able to to feel the difference between what's good and what isn't good for you. Do the same thing with the bread or the candy bar, then the nuts. And, And so you go through this whole process of doing this a few times. So you've got the feeling of what's good for you and what's not so good for you. It sounds so simple, and it really is so simple, but it's something that we have to ingrain in our body so that the next time you're in the store and you're picking up the bag of cookies and you just ask yourself, is this good for me? And you'll get that feeling. No, it's not. And it's fascinating because most of the time you can put those cookies back down again and go and pick up the apple or something else. It's really about training the mind. The body knows, she or he knows exactly what's good for you. I once had a patient say to me, I need chocolate. I said, well, there's a big difference between what your body needs and what your mind wants. The body doesn't need chocolate in any, in any form, but the mind does. And so there's that differentiation. You know, what does the mind want? What do we think we want? And what does the body need? Difference between needs and wants, right? Because you'd be eating for you. You'd be eating for your genes. You'd be eating for your body. And the results of that would be more energy and more vitality. And believe me, we all are looking for that. So if we can learn intuitive eating, if we can practice intuitive eating, we're going to be so, there's going to be so much um, empowerment and really some freedom. Vitality is such an important factor of how we function. And believe me, if you can eat well for your body, and intuitive eating becomes the part of, yes, this isn't good for me, and let me pass it over, and understand that, it's freedom. So practice. It's as simple as that, and yet it's so hard. 